Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Sosa and I'm a software engineer who kind of just talks about her career in software engineering. And in this video, I'm going to be answering the most frequently asked questions or question and answer for a software engineer. So if you want to see that, make sure to stay tuned. This video kind of stemmed out of me wanting to do a live stream for you guys and kind of creating this atmosphere of or community vibe where, where anyone, any subscriber, whether or not you're a subscriber, could come in, ask me questions about engineering or just about me in general, and then I could answer your questions, give you honest answers. And I tried to set that up and I failed miserably. So I was like, okay, well, I don't want to leave you guys hanging. I still want to answer some of your questions. So I think that's what I'm going to do today. So let's just get right into it. But before we get right into it, don't forget to like and subscribe down below so that you can get more content like this in the future. The first way we can start off this Q&A, who am I? <laughs> so my name is Sosa. I don't want to give you my full government, but my name is Sosa and I graduated from a smaller boy school in upstate New York with a degree in computer science. and. I didn't know I wanted to study computer science, just knew that I wanted to do something that I loved and ended up taking a comp sci class and really liking it and just, it took over my life from there. And then, yeah, so I ended up doing some internships, blah, 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 blah. And then I ended up getting a job on the West Coast. And so I moved out of my family's house and started a job here in Silicon Valley at a really cool, company it's a design company <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to give too much away but they do really cool things and i get to work on a really huge product that millions of people use every single day and it's kind of crazy how i got to where i am but i really love what i do and i kind of just want to share my experience with other people and answer any questions that people may have if they want to be in the same position that i'm in so that's why i'm here and that's why i'm doing this what is my journey into engineering or what was my journey into engineering. And so I kind of touched on this in my how I became a engineer video, but basically I came into college wanting to be a doctor and knowing that I was gonna be a doctor. And I ended up taking classes and not really liking it. And after my freshman year, I was like, I need to do something else or I'm really gonna end up not liking what I do at the end of the day. And I, luckily I was in school on scholarships, so I didn't really have to worry about all the loans that I was taking out, but it's still a lot of effort and time to go to college and study. And I also had to work part-time because I had to, I had to support myself. So I really wanted to make sure that I was going to college for a good reason and that I was doing what I really loved. And so one of my friends was like, let's take a computer science class. And I was like, let's computer science. And she's like, don't worry, just read up about what it is online and then let's just take it, let's just do it, I really want to try it. And I was like, okay, whatever, I'll take it with you, it can't be as bad as organic chemistry. <laughs> so I took the class, ended up loving it, and that was the Intro to Computer Science course. And in that course we were learning Python and we were building things and learning about data structures and all that jazz. And my instructor was amazing and I loved it. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll stick with this. And then I ended up taking two more comp sci classes in the next semester. And then I ended up doing a machine learning internship with the same intro to computer science professor that I had for the intro class. And then after that, I became a teaching assistant for the data structures class, as well as the intro to computer science class. And I was helping students with their fundamentals in computer science, mainly in Python and C++. I did that for a semester, and then I got a summer internship at Hewlett Packard in, or HP, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I did that for a summer. And that was a software engineering position with this with the specialty of uh, release engineering or devops it was really cool i was learning things that i didn't know about it was a whole new field of software engineering that i had never even known and that um, a lot of people don't talk about and after that summer i went on to start applying to full-time roles and i applied to 
literally hundreds of positions, did tons of interviews, went to the Grace Hopper event where a bunch of recruiters come and you can give out your resumes and you can talk to recruiters and have on-site interviews that weekend. Ended up doing a couple interviews, giving out my resumes to as many companies as I could. And then after that, months after, or that happened in, I think, September of my senior fall semester. And so it wasn't until November November that I got a call from the company that I now work at from a recruiter saying that we really like um, saying that they really like my resume and that they wanted me to come in and I was like okay cool I'll, I'll interview yeah that that was it from there I did the interview really liked the hiring manager really liked the team I did a full round of interviews or quote unquote on sites online because they wanted me to come out during my finals week and. One of my professors was like, if you go out there, you're gonna get an automatic zero for your final. And I was like, nah. <laughs> so um, they allowed me to do everything online, which is awesome. So I ended up getting the job the end of my senior fall. And so for senior spring, I just focused on taking classes and making sure to leave college strong and to prepare myself for what was about to come next. And then I moved out to California, Silicon Valley, and I've been here ever since. Next question is what coding language to start in? So whenever anyone asks me that question, I always go to Python because that is the coding language that I started off with when I was learning it in school. I think Python is super easy, or not super easy, but like easier to pick up than other languages, say like C++ or Java, because Python is super human readable and it's almost as if you're writing uh, like an, like. I was gonna say it's almost as if you're writing an actual language, but technically Python is a language, but it's just, it flows a little easier and it's, I, I feel like it's a little easier to grasp than the more verbose languages. Try Python first. If you don't like Python, you can always go towards JavaScript or you could even try C++ or Java, but I think Py it makes more sense to start off with Python, do the online tutorials, there are a bunch of free resources and you can be able to learn Python and then also build a really cool project out of it and then put that on your resume and show that off whenever you go to apply to jobs or talk to hiring managers. You're, you're then able to show what you've been able to build. If you don't have as much experience or if you didn't go to school for it or if you're about to go to school, whatever the case may be, if you don't have a lot of experience, projects are a good way to show what your skills are and what you can do. And so if you're taking those first steps into coding, again, Python's a great language and make sure that you build something. It doesn't have to be amazing. It doesn't have to be something new or innovative. Just anything to get your to get you started and to get your feet wet in something. And yeah, people build calculators. They build websites. Not really with Python. Well, you, I guess you could build a website with Python. But you could literally build anything and just to be able to say that you did it and to be able to show that you did it with some really cool code. I think that, that that's awesome. Next question, tips for getting into the coding industry without a degree. So it's an interesting question. I think that there are a bunch of ways to get into programming and becoming a software engineer when you don't have a computer science degree or a software development degree or a information, information something degree, whatever it may be. I think that, so what I said before, learning a programming language is crucial in that case like you really want to be able to start building projects and be able to have a portfolio of things that you've built so that you are able to show it off in interviews and so that you're able to show hiring managers that although you don't have a degree in this you put in the initiative to learn these skills and to learn these things and i think that that really makes people stand out a lot of times people will also go to boot camp and boot camps are kind of just a crash course um uh, cs fundamentals um so data structures programming languages and a lot of it's uh, front-end languages, like JavaScript or Ruby on Rails or whatever, they'll teach you CS fundamentals with these programming languages and then usually you'll end up going into some type of web development role and then you can work your way into whatever other field you want to do after that. And so there are a bunch of options for boot camps. They can be super pricey. There are some boot camps, however, that 
will allow you to go, you apply and then you go. And then at, at the end of the boot camp, which can be a couple months or a couple weeks, at the end, you if you're able to get a job, they then take a percentage from the salary that you make for a couple of years. So instead of front loading the cost, you could be able to push it back, get a job first and then pay them um, later on which could be a cool option. And it's also hard for me to give this advice because obviously I have a CS degree and so I don't really have experience with going into the industry without a degree, if that makes any sense. But from what I've seen online, from what I've seen other people do, friends, they've, I've had a friend who went to a boot camp, ended up getting a job a couple weeks after the fact and he majored in history and Africana studies. So it's possible as long as you're passionate about it, as long as this is something that you really want to do and you're willing to put in the work, then you can do it. And you don't have to go to a boot camp. You can just learn things on your own and build awesome projects and be able to showcase the skills that you've learned. Next question is what advice do I have for freshmen? And that for me is a loaded question. I think for me, and I think I made a video about this, I'm not completely sure. I think the biggest advice I would give for freshmen is to make sure to ask for help when you need it. And this can literally go to whether you're a, a computer science major, a history major, an art major, whoever you are, make sure you ask for help whenever you need it. Especially in CS where sometimes you can get bogged down by the weight of a project and how difficult or complex it is and trying to figure out error messages that you don't understand. Don't wait until the last minute to ask a friend or a teaching assistant or a professor for help. If you're not understanding concepts, if you're not understanding, if you're not understanding things right away then don't be afraid to ask for help that's what these people are here for so that they can help you and I was dumb <laughs> and in some instances I didn't ask for help when I needed it and I thought I could do it all on my own and I'm sure that some people can I was not one of those people and in some instances I asked for help way too late and it only came back to bite me in the butt no one else if you're in the same situation and if you're finding yourself just so confused about everything make sure to reach out to somebody have a conversation use the resources that you have in front of you next question how do you get internships from good companies I think one of the biggest ways in getting internships and getting jobs are kind of similar in the fact that you need, first of all, you need a standout resume. You need a resume that goes into detail of the things that you've done, whether it's in your courses or in other internships that you've done or in projects that you've built. You need to be able to display your skills in a, in a manner that makes somebody want to to get to know you a little bit more and to understand a little bit more of what you've done after you pass the initial recruiter stage you then want to get prepared for the interview and for most technical and for most technical internships you are going to have a phone call with the recruiter first to see how, whether or not you match up with the position and then you'll have a phone a phone call or two or Google Hangouts or whatever it is with an engineer to assess your coding ability. And then you'll go to on sites and do a full day of both coding interview questions and then behavioral questions at some more technical companies. It's just pure coding questions all day long and make sure to improve your logic and coding skills because those are super necessary to be able to pass those technical interview rounds. And then also check out the this book called Cracking the Coding Interview. It kind of goes into detail about what recruiters and engineers are looking for in a candidate when they are interviewing them and what types of technical questions they will ask. So next question, how to improve logic and coding skills. And so I feel like I've talked about this a lot in the previous answers that I gave, but I think the biggest ways to improve your logic and coding skills is to, is to code, you know? So build a project, pick up a new language that you've never used before and just build something. Or you can practice leak code questions or you can practice hackering questions or you can go to hackathons. There are so many ways to build your coding skills. The resources are abundant and endless online and you can always be able to find something that you're interested in learning more about. Getting a little dark as you can see 
but i hope that i answered all of your questions obviously if you have any more questions make sure to leave it down in the comments down below i respond to literally every single comment and yeah also make sure to like and subscribe if you like this video so that you can get more videos like this in the future and yeah that's it i'll see you in the next one